Well, welcome everyone. Uh, joined by uh, Matt Brandon, as always, handles our creative direction and, and, and marketing direction here. Uh, but we are also joined by Dr. Philip Cordova. He is a chiropractor in the Houston area. He's got uh, two locations and a half a dozen or more doctors on staff. So thank you for joining us, Dr. Cordova. Thanks for having me. So, Dr. Cordova, the reason we asked you to, 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 to be here with us and share with us is because you have been creating content for a very long time. You have um, YouTube videos that go back over 10 years. You've been committed to blogging and producing content regularly, very active on social media, um, leveraging Facebook and Instagram. So I'll just start with a very basic question. What m motivated you or what made you decide to start producing content? Uh, my goal with the internet is that my wife was uh, working for another chiropractor and they had a, a website, one of the first ones up. It was ranked number two in Houston at the time. And they were generating a couple of new patients um, a month or actually a couple of week. And I thought I'd like a couple of new patients a week. And I signed up for a, a website with one of the companies that kind of gives you those templated websites and um, crickets, you know, there was this nothing happening. Uh, that led me into looking at, you know, wh where would I show up? And then, of course, they would they'd say, uh, you know, if you type in Philip Cordova Core Chiropractic Houston, you're you're number one. And I'm like, you know, I, d I just thought, who cares? That like that just <laughs> no one types that. That's and so that was just my very first question, even before uh, you know SEO was really a thing. I just um, I just realized that you know there had to be a different way of doing it. So I started exploring SEO and things. Um, and then once I had one spot on the front front page of Google, then I said, well, how could I get another spot? And so I started thinking about, you know, there had to be another website, right? So either another website or something like MySpace or Facebook or YouTube would show up there. Um, so that's why I started thinking about ways that I could show up on in more places. Uh, my goal for any of it was that, you know, they didn't have to choose me as their chiropractor uh, because, you know, I'm not always the right fit for everybody. I'm too far or I don't, you know, I don't have what they want or whatever, but I wanted to at least be in the conversation. And so the only way I could be in the conversation is to show up more places. And if I showed up more places, then they at least bump, keep bumping into me until uh, they either chose me or didn't choose me. But I didn't want to not be there. That's a great yeah. background. I, I appreciate it. Really work. Yeah. Yeah. So before we, uh, before I toss to Matt here, I know he's got some questions. I'll, I'll ask about the current situation. So we're all in um stay home work safe mode uh so any any thoughts from you on that how it's affecting your business or things that you're doing right now things maybe you wish you'd been doing all along or is, has that brought anything to light in, in terms of just what we're dealing with right now uh well i really like my team you know the the chiropractors and the staff that i have so it was uh goal number one was try not to lose anyone um over this so we were trying to uh you know, just keep the doors open initially was, was the objective, but then it was, Hey, these are good people. They're used to being busy and we need to find stuff for them to do. Uh, I keep a long list on an, an app I use called Todoist and it just, I keep track of all these projects and all these things I wanted to do. So my wife and I started looking at it and we realized there was a ton of things that we needed help with that we could get them to do. It was, uh, we scanned tons of old financial documents, uh, we started looking at uh, you know blog posts and posture tips that we could create, and um, I had a little project to come up with a hundred posture tips, and we were only at forty. So I uh, you know the guys got involved, and we're at a hundred now. So I just had to come up with that. Um, we wanted uh, as many of our procedures uh, documented as we could do. Um, we started uh, since we're creating content anyway. Uh, we decided to create some content for ourselves. So it was uh, training videos. Um, so right now we're. Uh, the staff were filming, you know, how to greet a patient on day one, how to uh, uh, seat a patient in the room on, the, on day one. So uh, we're, we're just trying to look at this time favorably of how can I keep these people busy um, with things that maybe don't generate income right now, um, but will help us down the road. Talk a little bit about that. Why do you think that will help you down the road? Because that's, that's interesting. I don't think a lot of people connect those dots. Well, I mean, once we're busy, we just don't have the time, energy, or desire to create a bunch of content. You know, it's right. when you have this this space, you get a, a moment to breathe and a moment to get a little more creative on things. I mean, I the same hat that I wear to be a chiropractor is not the same hat I wear to create content. I mean, it's just the the two are separate, and that's why people don't always think about that. 
Um, but one of the things we had is, um, you know, we had a couple of staff people leave recently. One got moved, um, her husband took a job in Florida and another one left for maternity leave. And we've had a few of those and, and we've learned that to bring a new chiropractic assistant on board, um, it takes, I don't know, a little longer than I would have liked. Um, and we also noticed that people make the exact same mistakes every single time. Uh, so it was like, how can we shorten that up? And I, I feel like if I can onboard a new employee faster, uh, that helps uh, with that curve. And also, uh, you know, people are different learners. Uh, some people need to read it. Some people need to hear it. Some people need to be told. Some people need to do it. Some people need all of that. Uh, we have a, a reference manual, but uh, to have videos they could see somebody doing it well, uh, I thought that would be very helpful to have. And so uh, they're, they've gotten excited about it. You know, some of them are a little more camera shy than others, but it's, um, they, they get the concept and they, all of them have said, yeah, that would have really helped me out a lot if I would have had that. Uh, so we're just coming up with uh, all the questions. So it's quite a list once you start actually thinking about everything. You know, it's in our office, it's how to set somebody up on, on electric stimulation, how to set somebody up on spinal decompression, how to take someone off, how to um, answer the phone calls like this, you know, how to uh, show somebody, we give everyone an office tour on the third visit so they kind of know what our procedures are. You know, let's record that. It's, um, it's, it's been very helpful to come up with concepts uh, that need to be documented so that they can refer back to it. And once you start, brainstorming that list, you realize how many things you actually do need to record to do that. And, uh, you know, it gets, it gets to be a long list and it's, you're almost grateful to have something to do. We went the first week or two of, with nothing like, okay, let's just kind of, everyone stay positive. Let's do that. And, and then it was, you know, the best way to keep everybody positive is to feel like they're doing something productive. And now it's almost like, okay, we don't have enough time. We need more time. It's almost, we're, we're trying to figure out slots to, to get this stuff done. I mean, okay, we've got 15 minutes here. Let's knock out a video. Um, so we've been looking at it much differently and we're, we're busy now the whole time. I mean, it's not always seeing patients, but, um, we're definitely busy. That's really cool. I love that. I love that you have made uh, content, not only public facing, but also to help your team as well. That's really cool. Um, and you, you talked about how people learn in different ways. And I think you also have a kind of multi-channel content plan. I mean, you, you send emails, you have social media graphics that you do, you do video, you do blog posts. So you kind of, any way you want to learn about this topic, you have provided a way to do that. Um, I think that's really cool. And you have been doing it a long time. You, uh, I looked, your first video on YouTube was July 1st, 2009. So <laughs> I don't you, I want to see that video, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, you've been at that a long time. Uh, so was there, was there a moment for you when you realized, uh, hey, this, this producing content thing is working and it's something I'm going to continue to do. Was there something that happened or was it just kind of like over time you saw the, the arrow slowly go up? Yeah. Well, see, my wife had made this posture exercise video that uh, it was a DVD and we were selling that. And uh, that's when I really got into SEO because the, the, I, I felt like at the time it was like you're, you're ranking for Houston chiropractor and that was kind of it. So I didn't really have, a vision beyond that. I, I, I thought, you know, we get reviews, we'll, we'll have some more content, but it was, you know, what would somebody type in? And it was Houston chiropractor. And I kind of left it at that. But when it came to the posture video, I was doing uh, paid ads initially. And so that you start to brainstorm all the keywords and all the phrases that people search for, for uh, posture. And uh, once you start putting all that together, you start realizing, okay, well, I'm paying for this, but if I just had something that showed up organically, that would be helpful. And so, uh, you know, how do I improve my posture? It was like, great, you know, um, how do I prevent text neck? Okay, great, so let's just make videos that go along with that. Um, people will start responding to the videos, uh, positive or negative, at least I knew people were watching them. Um, I think I've probably even deleted videos off of there where I'm just like, oh, I can't look at that video anymore. I don't wanna, it's, it's, bad or you know you just shoot an updated version i think i made that mistake early on as i started getting rid of content that even had views but i just didn't like how it looked and instead i realized now i could just say hey update a video click here um, i could do things like that but um but it was more of that it was like how can i show up for more things and when you're trying to show up and be in the conversation with chiropractic that's one thing but when you're trying to be in the conversation for uh something that has so many different ways to look for it um uh, then that it was easier to come up with more content. And, and I kind of got stuck initially trying to come up with chiropractic content. I, I wasn't really using my brain too much on, it was like chiropractic and headaches, chiropractic and low back pain, but it wasn't, I wasn't being very creative with it at first, but posture, I was being very creative with that. 
Um, so I wrote tons of articles. I wrote tons of blog posts. I wrote, um, you know, we did lots of videos. Um, the hardest part was just scheduling a time or getting my wife to be willing to shoot that video or to remember to say the key phrase in it or things like that. But, um, but that was, that was kind of the genesis of, of getting started with that. Okay, cool. Uh, in the last 10 years, what's, what's changed? Like, how was your, how's you, how have you had to make adjustments? If, if well, at all. Well, I started with a video camera that had a tape, you know, uh, right. <laughs> would transfer that over. Uh, now I just use my phone. I mean, it's a lot easier uh, to do that. Uh, I initially pulled every light out of my house and took it to the office and tried to get enough um, of, a, of a good lighting situation. Um, so you experiment with that a bit. Now it's very cheap to buy good lights. I mean, they have light kits and green screens and you can be as creative as you want. Um, my son's big into doing TikTok stuff right now and just the editing tools available in the TikTok op app itself are way better than anything we started off with. Uh, so the ease of creating content is, is definitely there. Um, the standard of the video, like I, I, there's some people who are really going all out. I mean, they've definitely, they've got some, you know, video skills. They've got a nice big camera. They got the right lights. They do nice transitions, but you find, you know, it's just enough to create that video. Uh, the only one that scares me is the ones I see people that are clearly driving while they're making their video. Uh, I don't recommend that one. Uh, that doesn't seem safe. And, you know, uh, but yeah. I, but even that, I mean, your people are just in their car. There's a video camera going. You don't, you can shoot those videos anywhere, and and um, um, it's easier now to get that video uh, recorded, uh, you know, edited on your phone and uploaded within minutes compared to uh, how long it used to take me to edit videos and get them uploaded. So, um, so when we we worked with you uh, a little bit, and when when we first started kind of coming alongside and helping with some of that content, we started putting your um, your patients kind of front and center in some of those videos. Right. And uh, were you at what they had to say? Was Did I, I cut out? Yeah, you cut out. So was I surprised at what they had to say? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because you know, I I think the first video round we did was uh, I think we were just looking for general chiropractic positive stories. It wasn't really condition specific, it wasn't therapy specific, it was just here's some people that might say some nice stuff about our office. And, um, and I picked a couple of people that I knew, I mean, they'd been with me a long time. So I, I generally remembered, I thought what was going on with their story, but they had not necessarily told me everything um, of the impact. And, um, you know, sometimes the only compliment we get from our patients is that they come back, you know, that's, you don't necessarily get to hear a lot of positive feedback about it. Maybe you get a good review and it's, you know, a couple of sentences, but, uh, I think, you know, you did a really good job of asking them questions that made them consider how they felt about our office or what was their life like before. Maybe they didn't quite consider it. Um, so I know one of the stories I, I was definitely, you know, brought to tears of like, oh my God, I had no idea that she was going through all that, uh, you know, that she was unwilling to leave the house or go do little trips with her kids because uh, a migraine could, could happen and how debilitating that was for her. And I knew she had migraines. I knew they were a problem, but I had not quite put exactly how it was a problem for her and exactly how it was affecting her life. And to hear her tell that story um, was was great. I mean, I, I know she's a very nice person. I know she likes our office and she's been generally positive about everything. Um, she remembered the fact that she said that uh, she thought chiropractors were quacks when she came in. Um, I didn't even remember that part. She, and that was the part that she hung on to with the initial consultation. I was just so interested in her, her migraines the first time that I, I really, that's not what stood out to me in that initial visit. But, um, uh, but hearing all the ways that it affected her and all the ways that her life had improved was, uh, was nice to hear and surprising to hear uh, the depth to it. And I, I didn't expect that. Yeah, and I think that's something that we see that we see regularly is, you know, you don't often hear uh, the difference that you make in, in people's lives. And, and we've seen that with your patients, I would, I would say, especially is that, I mean, their lives really are changed. And when you give them the opportunity to talk about that, it really is moving. And so, um, you know, I would just throw out encouragement for anybody out there who, who, who is kind of nervous to put their customers on camera. It, it really can uh, be a little bit humbling, I, I would say. Right. You, I mean, you have no idea. I mean, if, if they've come back more than a handful of times, they probably like you. Okay. You know, if they're, if they're, if they're getting results, that's fine too. But you know, some people are, are more uh, emotional about it, more vocal about it. 
uh, some people just the fact that they've come back is is their compliment to you. But uh, you hearing all the different layers of their life and things going on, it's it's interesting. Uh, you know, just in in this situation with you guys coming out to shoot videos, we had to tell them, "I need you to be here at this time." It may not be the day that they normally would come into our office. So. Uh, I know one of the ladies was dressed to the nines when she came in. She really knew, understood that the internet's forever, and she wanted to make sure that she was uh, well represented of herself on there. Um, but just hearing that, and I think it was good. Like I, some of the patients that we've interviewed uh, are not even my patients; they're some of the other doctors in my office's uh, patients. So um, that was even more of a trickle down because I, I really see myself in a mentor role with my other doctors, and so to hear that I've helped to mentor them and they're um, changing the lives of other people, it just helps helps you realize that it's, it's making a difference, you know, for a lot of people that I've, it's not just me seeing people that we're expanding our ability to see people. Um, and it's, it's making a difference and they're doing a good job. And I knew they were good doctors and I knew they were good guys, but to, uh, to see it, see it and hear it, uh, it was, it was nice. It was nice to see that. It's awesome. And I think, I think for other people who are, who are viewing those, you know, when people can be vulnerable and talk about their real experiences, that's going to relate, I think, because uh, someone else is likely to share some of those experiences and moments. And um, I just think it's good all around. Good feels. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I've, I've been also surprised at the willingness of the people to come do it. It's like you think, oh, I don't know if I should ask them or not. Um, and you just bring it up and, and they're like, oh, yeah, great. No, no problem. Uh, yeah. Happy to do it. And we're not promising them anything. I'm not paying them anything. It was just I mean, that's been my approach on any customer feedback reviews. I do not incentivize, you know, I, I'm just not doing it. If you want to, if you want to come do it, great. If you don't want to do it, that's fine too. I understand not everyone is, is comfortable in front of the camera. Um, but I, I remember some guy doing that. He was incentivizing for reviews and, and uh, you know, people just put on there, you know, Hey doc, I left my review. Can't wait to get my free t-shirt. And I'm like, Ooh, yeah, you just ruined all of your reviews. So, uh, people aren't going to say that about our stuff because I'm not giving them anything. I mean, I just, that's just not how it's going to be. Yeah. Uh, so that's something, something to think about. Yeah. Very good. Well, um, thank you so much for your insights. Um, you've been doing this for a long time and you've been doing it really well and, uh, we're, we've happy to have played our part, but, um, thank you for your time and your, and your expertise there. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Dr. Cordova. Thanks.